let's hit it. And welcome to Alzheimer's Speaks Radio. I'm your host, Lori LeBay, and I'm so excited that you're joining us today. We are going to have a fascinating conversation, as usual, as we learn from people all around the world at all ages and stages of life. Stay tuned as we shift our dementia care from crisis to comfort. Here we go. What you think about. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Alzheimer Speaks Radio. I'm your host, Lori LeBay, and I know you're going to enjoy the show today. This is just such an incredible story uh, that we're going to be talking about. There are some fabulous, fabulous books on the market now, and I can't wait to introduce you to the founder and creator of this series. Um, I, they are one of the best things that I have seen in terms of how she has put them together and designed them. So for those of you that are new to the show, I'm Lori LeBay. My mom had dementia for 30 years, and I just think it is so critical for us to connect to resources, products, and tools. And so Alzheimer's Speaks on all of our platforms is about raising everyone's voice. Everyone is welcome here. We need to share these resources. You know, that's our that's the, the lifeblood to hold us together. That's the glue with all of this. So please share this show with your friends and family members because it will give them insights. And maybe, just maybe, it'll give you some ideas of how you can contribute to the world of dementia and help the next person's life be a little bit easier. We had our opening music. It's called Clarion Call. I always like to give the Mark Arneson Band a shout out. They're just an amazing group and um, had offered that song up to us uh, to use. And I just think it's so uplifting. You can go ahead and download that on any of your favorite music platforms if you'd like. And, um, and just honor the band for the work that they do and contributed to, to the world of dementia as well. Now, before we get started, I always like to shout out to a couple of organizations, so I want to do that right now. The Memory Cafe Directory is a fantastic group and a ton of resources for actually five different countries. They have gathered where all the Memory Cafes are. And, you know, right now during COVID, they're not meeting in person. And so you can participate in a Memory Cafe online by going to Memory Cafe Directory and then click on Cafe Connect. I personally do two with Arthur's Senior Living on the second and fourth Wednesday of the month at one o'clock Central Time. And anybody is um, more than welcome to join us. Just reach out to me and I will get you that information. I also want to point out Dementia Map, a global resource directory, which we just developed and launched right before the holidays, which is growing every single day. Great resources, products, and tools that you can access there. And if you're a provider and want to participate, again, just reach out to me. I'd be more than glad to get you information. Budget is not an issue. We wanted to make sure everybody could have a place on Dementia Map. And then Coral Health is still allowing people to download two of their music apps for free during COVID. One is Music First and the other is Coral Faith. And you can go to Coral, that's C-O-R-O Health, Dot com. We're going to hear from the Foot Bar Walker, and then I get to introduce you to Nana's books. Introducing the life-changing Foot Bar Walker. I'm Peggy from Danville, Kentucky, and I'm 91 years old. The Foot Bar Walker revolutionized my care of George. It absolutely benefits the patient and the caregiver both, and that's the beauty of it. It's so easy to use. It folds up just like a dream. I got it in and out of the car without any effort at all. The saving that I made from having to put him in a nursing home came to about $192,000. Does someone you love use a walker? Do they struggle? 
struggle to get up from a seated position? Are you a caregiver dealing with physical pain and stress as you help your patient? The Foot Bar Walker was designed to assist not only the patient, but also the caregiver. Patients have more control standing up, and no lifting from the caregiver is required. See how it works at thefootbarwalker.com. That's thefootbarwalker.com. Peggy, would you recommend the Foot Bar Walker? Do I ever? I would not be in the health that I'm in today at this age had it not been for the Foot Bar Walker. I'm so excited to introduce you to Lorette Clear. She is a certified dementia practitioner and a senior advocate. She's the creator of Nana's Books, and she has consciously created just this treasure trove of large format, nostalgic, um, fine art and literature designed to meet the needs of people experiencing brain changes. And they're also just fantastic tools for any care partner, family or professional. So welcome, Lorette. I am so excited to have you on this show today because I cannot believe what you have developed. It's amazing and I can't wait to share it with everyone. So thank you so much for taking time to be with us this morning. Thanks for having me, Lori. I really appreciate your interest in Anna's books and um, for, you know, I thank you for having me here. Well, you know, before I start with any of the line of questionings, I always ask uh, all my guests the same questions, and that is, have you been personally touched by dementia in your own family or circle of friends? Yes, absolutely. So my mother-in-law actually passed two days ago. Um, she lived with Louis de body dementia for, I'd say, um, you know, it, it built, but, you know, I'd say for six or seven years, and um, the my product line is born of necessity. It was something that I developed for her specifically. And as an educator, I realized that high interest materials, developmentally appropriate materials and um, things that are really uh, targeted to people's uh, sense of identity and nostalgia, I thought, can't miss. So really um, inspired by my mother-in-law, hence the name of the series, Nana's Books. Wonderful. And so sorry for your loss. I just want to, to um, mention that. But, you know, she'll Thank live you. on forever through these books and be helping so many, so many people. It's just incredible. That's kind of how I feel with Alzheimer's Speaks, too. That's an extension of my experience through dementia. And it's, it's really amazing how many people step up and step out to help others, you know, during this experience. I think each and every one of us um, have learned things that we can share, you know, if we if we take the time and the energy to do that. So, and I know it takes a lot of time and a lot of energy. So thank yeah. you. I want to ask you, you um, in a little bit more detail on how you came up with the idea for the for the book series. And your inspiration was definitely your mother-in-law. But, you know, where did that come from, you know, in terms of an engagement piece? Uh, were you just feeling lost and that she needed something that just wasn't out there or do you find that there's other competitors i haven't seen anything to the extent that you've done i'll be honest in the area of of books and in reminiscing to the fashion you've put them together um you know i would go visit my mother-in-law in um initially in assisted living and then she moved up to the memory care um floor and i you know wonderful place and i could see that she'd get the Boston Globe and it would remain wrapped up in plastic by her door. And that was just a point of pride with her. She'd like to get up in the morning, read her Boston Globe with her morning coffee and she'd read the Patriot Ledger. She grew up um, on the in South Boston, but was raising her family on the South shore of Massachusetts. I knew she loved to read her Mary Higgins Clark and she enjoyed reading and still enjoyed reading, but I felt that it it was limiting her, um, you know, the dementia was because the there was too much text. The paper, the newspaper itself was too cumbersome. The news was too upsetting. Um, there was just too much to make it approachable to her. And she needed something that was formatted in such a way that she could still partake and it wasn't daunting to her. So I thought maybe let's do something because I was a teacher and I was always looking to welcome new readers into the process, you know, whole language, reading, writing, and speaking. So I thought, what could I do to get her? My teacher brain went on back and under the whole language umbrella. And I thought, you know what? 
why not nostalgia? Why not nostalgic poetry? Why not fine art that, you know, when you're in an assisted living facility or you're in memory care, you're essentially in a locked unit for your protection. And the, the sad part about that is that if you love nature and you love museums and you just love fine art and you don't have that agency anymore to pick up and go to these places and do these things and see these magnificent sites anymore, and with COVID, the, even the library cart, if that was your salvation, doesn't come around to your room anymore. And I just thought this, something's got to change. There has to be something that I can bring in that's not Sudoku or word searches or puzzles or things, things like of that nature. I thought she really does like story and she really does like language and she really does love beautiful things. So how can I do that? And then I got requests from veterans. Oh, we have you know, uh, a veteran that, you know, he'd love to see some of these types of things again. And I thought, oh, wouldn't it be great to honor our vets because there's a really underserved population. I used to write grants for um, underserved populations and then off to the races. You know, when you mentioned the newspaper and the sense of pride, my mom always had to have the paper too. I mean, it was part of her routine and she would get up and she would hold it. And I'll never forget one day I walked into the nursing home and she was holding it upside down. Yeah. And people were, you know, had walked by previously and they were laughing at her because she held it upside down. And I remember approaching her and I, did, I, I didn't want her to lose her dignity at all. And so I just right. said, Mom, can I see the paper? There's something on there. I just, and I'll give it right back. And then I, I looked and I turned it around and I gave it to her the right way. Instead yeah. of saying, oh, you can't even read, you know, and blah, blah, blah. You know, because sometimes people get really scolding with that stuff. But it really, truly was a, so important to, for right. her to be able to have access and, and feel normal. Your books are, uh, like I said, they're just amazing. <clears throat> I want you to talk a little bit before we get into the books themselves, but the how and the why you structured the books and if they vary in the series. And I know you've got a few more even in the hopper, but... Right. You know, you started this during COVID, and I, I just cannot believe what you've produced. I mean, it, you must just be channeled directly <laughs> from the heavens to get all this stuff pushed out because it really is incredible. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm, it is coming right through me. I don't know. Um, I, I, you know, I don't really know how that's exactly happening. I stay up some nights till like two and three o'clock in the morning when the house is quiet. I have teens, um, so you know what that's like. But to circle back to your mom, to answer your question, um, you know, her dignity, her identity, her retained, um, you know, uh, cognition, well, all of the things that made her her, that comes into question when you have dementia. And it's just such a, you know, dispiriting time for the person living with dementia. And I thought, why can we bring something that's great, that's formatted, for them appropriately so that it's large font for people with low vision. It's a sans serif font, which is the most simple, um, clearly uh, delineated font. Let's do um, less text on the page. Let's do every book is predictably formatted so that the text is always on one side and the artwork is always on the other. And it's not threatening because you can either read it aloud um, to someone who, um, let's say is further along, um, you know, uh, let's say people that like to read, like my mother-in-law did initially, and actually she did right till the end. Um, she could pick it up and read it and enjoy it herself. Let's say when she was alone, she could have a few on her coffee table or on her bedside table. Um, and then people that are, as Tipa Snow says, pearls, which are people that are an end stage dementia that are let's say bedridden and they're nonverbal, of course, non-ambulatory, but they can really hear you and they understand and they are really looking to connect and still be part of the human community. And because they have aphasia and because they're, that part of their brain isn't working that they can speak, that doesn't mean they're not there. So they really do like the poetry. And that was what I started with because I think the melodic nature of poetry is like music. And we know how effective music is with people living with dementia. It really just, it there's a part of your amygdala that regulates your emotion. And people argue that that's the seat of your soul. And, and if you can recite some of these beautiful um, uh, poems that, that people recall from the, you know, from the canon of American and British, you know, uh, literature that we all recall from childhood prayers and, um, 
poems and uh, hymns, and I've got all that gospel, all types of different books. That is bringing a, a gift in. And there are only so many times you can go with the big box of Puffs Plus and the flower, little flower arrangement. Or um, my mother-in-law loved her cold pizza. We'd bring her a cold pizza. We'd get the pizza. And by the time she got it, she liked to sit there. And we would literally chew the fat because she'd sit there chewing the cold pizza. And I'd read aloud to her. So, But it helped her maintain her dignity because all you have to do really is look at the pictures. And you can point things out and take a picture walk. So that's non-threatening. And that's positive. And that's a shared experience. And sometimes the text and the images we got so far afield with it, we would just chat and chat and chat because it was very generative. It would generate some really cool conversations. And I learned things about her in this window of time that I would never have learned about her prior to her um, walking this walk with Louis Body Dementia. So I, I really see the gift in it. I see the gift in that time. And I wanted to make it as um, you know rich and textured as, as, as I could. And, and that's pretty much what we did. Yeah, you you really really did, and I love the large font. I love the consistency of you know where the text is versus where where the uh, photography is and the artwork, and it's so varied in these books. I mean, it just really is. Um, each book is very inclusive. It's non threatening. Um, when you talked about poetry, I just interviewed um, Susan Zimmerman, who is a, a national speaker friend of mine, and she just uh, produced this book, a uh, beautiful book of of poems and and um, pictures for loss called Rays of Hope. And she was talking and she's a she's also a um, financial planner and a therapist, kind of a strange combination, but she talked about the importance of the rhythm of poems and what it does to our brains, just like you were saying. And so many people don't understand, um, they've, they've come to accept that music is really powerful. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we need to push that with with our words and with prose uh, and get people to understand that can be just as powerful as well to so many people. And so I'm really, really, really glad that you brought that up. You want to give us an example of one of your books? We'll just kind of, if you want to grab one and- sure. and I've got a whole bunch here. Sure. Yeah. And back to your point, you know, um, when you're a caregiver, you know, typically caregivers are women and, you know, that, that are sandwiched in between school age children or the workplace. And then after work going and seeing a loved one in care and all that. So you don't have the time or the mental energy or the wherewithal to go back and say, wow, I love that Wordsworth poem. Or I, you know, I love uh, you know, Robert Frost or any of the, of the classics. And then you've got to pick ones that aren't, you know, around death or around anything upsetting or aren't around anything that would bring back a, you know, a sad memory or, or something like that. So this way it's all vetted, it's all happy and, and positive and, or just a window into simpler times. It, some, some have to do with crossroads and passages and, and they're not all, you know, sweetness and light, but they are, you know, they're, they're, again, they're not going to upset or, um, you know, confuse anyone. And I, I really did the first set of poems. So that brings me to the first book around sundowning. So the name of the book is sit with me at sundown. And this series of, these are the poetry books. So poetry is meant to soothe. So the sit with me at sundown series is poetry to, as I said, to read yourself or to have a loved one read to you. So let's say you're in care and you don't know your caregiver um, or you don't remember your caregiver or it's, you know, there are staff changes and so forth. This is a great opportunity to sit down with somebody and get to know them because you can reflect together on the um, poetry. And again, uh, this one's called Life's Journeys, as you can see down here, and it focuses on the journey of life. So for example, as I said earlier, like Frost's poem, The Road Not Taken. So mm -hmm. and there's a woman on the road and it's obviously the autumn. So again, if there, if it was too challenging, you could read it aloud to your person. Sometimes like my mother-in-law could read it to herself and she could think about the choices that you made in life and what brought you where you are and how you ended up, you know, where you did in life. And then you can also take a look at the scene and every image, I really tried Lori to choose an image that really helps people to enter into another realm of sorts where you're, it's not just a simple image, let's say a wheelbarrow, 
and a you know and a, a label where it says what the item is it really does bring you into you know what's happening and um like this is called wayside flowers and this is an image of surrey in england and it just talks about the flowers that you did or didn't pick along the way and the choices that you made and you know there could be some ennui or uh, some feelings of, you know, not necessarily regret or, or feelings of triumph and change. It's just what we've all been through. And then, you know, pictures that have, you know, children and adults and people that are, you know, um, you know, the aged people that are, you know, on the road of life that are having the experience and the images are all in the public domain and they're all vetted by an intellectual property attorney and really carefully, carefully selected to not just be, um, you know, usable for these purposes, but so that they really do mesh with the image meshes with the language and creates a, um, a real cohesive whole that this I is all that one. through. <laughs> um, and this is just a lovely, a lot of people say this in a eulogy and it, it essentially says that if you're pure of heart, you can't go wrong. Yep. Um, and just, again, these beautiful artworks that people wouldn't see again, because they are in care. And then for example, this is another one. This is another sit with me at sundown book poetry as well, but this one's devotional. And this one says poems of faith. So, um, and it's devotional poetry for the young at heart, as opposed to nostalgic poetry for the young at heart. So again, visually consistent. So if you see this on the table in care, you'll see, you, people can recognize and say, oh, I like those books. Or my mom likes those books. So these are poems that are, I love the light in this. Um, they're faith-based, but they're non-denominational and they are based in hymns and, you know, again, have the melodic cadence, which people really like and that they want to hear again and again. And it really does soothe them. I have seen many times when I'm reading aloud, I'll look around the room and they'll be, you know, heads to, like put back a little bit and then just eyes closed and some tears will roll, but it's like happy tears. And this is joyful, joyful. For the care, you can see who the artist is and you can see who the writer is. So you can say, oh, I, I think I recall that. And then all my life long. So these are a little bit, you know, some of the images and I intersperse dark and light and um, just beautiful, beautiful valleys and rivers and children and Grow, and they're grown ups. So those are, that's a sit with me at sundown series. And um, what I did was, is I, while we're on the poetry, I brought that to the veterans and that's the same layout and the same general idea, but these are specific poems and songs uh, to the five branches of the U S military and um, to honor the service of our military veterans that are living in care. So people at Walter Reed or people that are in any of the veterans homes, just real true patriotism, beautiful images, and just to really honor their time and service, the sacrifices that they and their families have made. And there's just truly, truly nothing out there like this for veterans. There's not a blessed thing that you could say, oh, I'm going to pick that up and bring that to them in the library or um, at a bookstore. There's nothing like that. So as you can see, all the different branches of the military are represented. And um, I just really feel such immense gratitude connection with our veterans and people that have served because, you know, at times divisive times, like an election and the things that have gone on at, at our core, this is what it's about. Yeah. These are the positive and good things. And again, so that kind of morphed from the poetry into, I did a whole series, but I'll kind of go quickly through that for veterans. So let's say that was a little bit cumbersome and, and there's that was more text than you might want you could do this one which is psalms but again simple non-denominational and they're just very simple narrative statements about the time the sacrifice the passages families you know and really love of country so this yeah. is the psalms and then as you can see the series so that little series is on on the back of the of the, these three books and then this book is perhaps the simplest of all. And this is a picture book. So it's a picture book. And again, I tried not to repeat images. So every book you bought all three that you have fresh images mm -hmm. and you'd see um, these aphorisms that are by like, for example, 
like Harry Ward Beecher. Okay. And raising the flag and so forth. So that's kind of, um, and again, every page there's something new and um, can be enjoyed again and again. And oftentimes with dementia, for the person, it's a new experience every time, or some some people have different recall and um, you know approach it um, differently each time. To continue on that vein, um, or I just to kind of maybe get off of that topic for a little bit. Um, I had to borrow this book back from one of my friends because I'd given out all of mine out and St. Patrick's Day is coming. So this is the wit and wisdom of Ireland, which I think is very campy. And I did this specifically for my mother-in-law because she grew up in South Boston in a predominantly a very, very Irish neighborhood. And these are just very witty sayings that I love this little girl with a pipe. Um, <laughs> and just things that people come up with, like, for example, you can't make a racehorse out of a donkey. So you can talk about that, about, you know, hey, you know, you're going to be what you're going to be. Not, not a lot. Or tis afterwards that everything is understood. So a young it couple. Really the truth, yeah. <laughs> it is so true. And then, um, you know, but again, and just, you know, words of wisdom when you're not fishing, be mending the nets. So there are a real variety um, in the books of, um, this is actually Mother Jones, who was, um, but, you know, you, you wouldn't know that. But um, truth stands when everything else fails. And a lot of these, sometimes they reach somebody that they can identify with some of these sayings. And they, they're they like, that's what they stand for too. May all your troubles be little ones. Mm. So everyone's got that connection to, um, you know, the, the universals, bringing home baby, uh, the empty nest, being part of a new couple, um, any of those things. So that's really what I focus on because it doesn't matter where you grew up or what your experience was. These are all things that we can relate to as part of, as I said before, the human community. So those well, are a few. And then let me know what else you might want to see. Well, you know, I, I, like I said, I just adore these. I think they're so powerful on so many levels. And they're they're different than a lot of things that, that are out there, I think. Um, one, because of the size. Right, you know, right. And, and the pictures that you've uh, that you've drawn in are really, a lot of them very artistic and just powerful and I think they can teach all generations about right. another generation as well of yeah. things that they might not have missed or oh I've never heard that before or you know what does that mean to you and you know how does that align with your your philosophy of life or how how did that affect you I mean there's just so many different ways to pull stories not just out of the person with dementia but I mean a true conversation between people as well in terms of you know how has this impacted you and to get the care partner to to think about certain things in life as well because i think sometimes as care partners we get so busy being busy oh we're going to do this right now boom 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 right. but we're not taking it in and i think your books draw both sides in which is really really cool really really cool so right now how many are in the series and how many do you have in the hopper so 13 in the series that are available on Amazon, two are um, a little bit held up um, there because for institutional sales, they've been the most popular, which I, I, when you go on Amazon and you look at all the different books, one is um, Nostalgic Book of Kittens. So it's all fine art and it's kittens doing all kinds of different things. And there's some, um, you know, there's some text that goes along with that. I thought, how you know, I'll just do this because I know people love it. Well, sure enough, that blew out. And then another one of the poetry and it's birds of a feather. That's also um, part of the sit with me at sundown series. It has a powder blue cover. My mother and father are on that cover. And that is gone because it's all birds. And, you know, we know our seniors, you know, we all do. We love to look, sit there and look at the feeders and look at the birds come and go and all the different species. I know where I am is really rural. And, um, you know, I love to see the bird activity, but this is just, but again, the literature that goes with the artwork is really, um, uh, you know, it really talks about the times in your life, the, the times that we've all experienced, particularly when you're cresting the hill, right? In life, mm -hmm. you, um, these are things to reflect on. And it's also great. I, I do have, my daughter Ingrid would go and see my mother-in-law. They were very, very close all the time. And these things are great, as you said, a great uh, catalyst for conversation and a great means with which to connect. That, that I think is, was very helpful. They had plenty to chat about on their own, but um, you know, when you've got someone who's, again, who's got more confusion and got more, um, you know, they're more challenged and, and it's, it's 
you know what they say when you met someone with dementia, you know, you've met one person with dementia because there's so many different manifestations and, you know, people are, are impacted to varying degrees. So, and again, and it varies from day to day, right? Um, one day she might be more um, lucid and more conversational. And one day she might be more reserved and more quiet and more, um, you know, in her own head. And, and that would be a day that this would be a good opportunity to take out one of these books. And because it, it, it's really difficult, I think, for the person that has dementia, it has to be so difficult when people say, how was lunch? Or mm -hmm. what'd you do this morning? Or what'd you have for breakfast? Or those are all things in their short-term memory that they really have difficulty accessing. But if you can somehow bring them back to that sweet spot, they say between, let's say 10 years and 30 years old, where you really do have total recall and you remember clear as day, your first date, you know, the county fair or the day your daughter was born or any of your high school graduation. And you can talk with real specificity about the Thanksgiving that you used to have at your great, great aunt's house in Armonk and, you know, on the river and what you brought and, you know, what her specialties were, but it's much harder to recall the steps and the processes, let's say, you know, the procedural stuff to brush your teeth or whatever. So to capitalize on the ability and that's, you know, in habilitative therapy, we talk about what can this person still do? How can we help them to access it? How can we help them feel they're connected and that they have purpose and that their life has meaning and um, how can we make that as authentic as possible? So these books help the younger generation, grandchildren, children, friends to come in. And it, it's, it, it kind of, I've gotten some feedback from people and they say, it's such a relief to me because when we have company, I kind of have to be the go between and I have to kind of, you know, ease the whole process. But when we can sit with the book, they've got a little something that they can talk about and the, the caregiver can get a little bit of a break and leave the room because they can chat about some of these days past and um, some of these, you know, beautiful moments, you know, re reclaimed. Yeah. So you know, I, I've been sitting in here while you were talking, just writing all these different topics, because I think I think your books could be endless. I mean, I could see one on dogs or just squirrels, you know, because how many times do you just watch the squirrels at the feeders, you know, trying to go after the bird feeders or farm animals or right. fishing or the holidays or birthdays or even one for, you know, a segment on police and fire and medical teachers, because you know, right. so often people go back to what they did, you know, what was identity, their, right? What was, the, what was their industry? Yeah. Um, you know, life on the water from, you know, swimming and water skiing to, you know, fishing. Uh, and, and those are all just fun moments that I think are just embedded, you know, in all of us, um, gardening, state fairs, all, all of those types of things are right. just, amazing moments and to be able to show the variety or even uh, the the um the the style changes of the generations would be an interesting one too you know to see how how right. things have changed and and so I, I you know i think what you're doing here is is absolutely endless and powerful because there's so there's so many things that can be grabbed and and brought together you know, to, to give life and hope and, and engagement to, which is really, really very, very neat. So individuals and um, more commercial institutions can, can purchase the books. Do you have like any bulk rates? Yes. So anybody, let's say that wanted to put together a, a sampler or, or a package, let's say, um, depending on, let's say it was for through Kiwanis or, you know, they wanted to give a bulk um, donation to a veteran's home. They might choose the three veterans books and decide to do a certain number of units. And so I could put together a package for them. So all people would have to do is contact me. And then let's say I've got the ones that are faith-based. That's something that I've got, you know, one of prayer, um, just to show you kind of the innards, you can see how on the wing, um, they're really just geared to the pairings are so strong. It doesn't necessarily have to be any particular denomination. So let's say you've got um, a community that's a faith-based community, you can order, let's say, four of those books. Um, to your point before about the endless opportunities, 
-hmm. I think it's great. I think whatever comes into the marketplace is great. And I think that this community needs a selection just like we all do. What I think differentiates my books, and again, I said, said I did the kitten book and a bird book, and those are very popular themes. Mm -hmm. How I can say that these mine are different is that, as I said, there's an absolute scene that you enter into, into in each one. For example, like look at the cover of this one. These kids are through a window and they're singing Christmas carols and you're entering a scene. Um, whereas most of the books that are out there are um, an item or um, something specific and then something, uh, you know, that it's either labeled or um, it's got a small amount of text. So that that's the difference. And the difference is also that I really bring in nostalgia. Nostalgia is really the hook. I feel that um, that is, and it's so much variety, but it's, um, you don't have to bring so much to it where it's a struggle to make conversation or it's a struggle to pick something out of the page. It's all there. So you can revisit that page again and again and again. So yes, there are, there are, countless opportunities out there and I'm hoping to bring for example like for gospel this is for anybody that likes gospel music and um that likes the the real standards um everything from you know over jordan to o shenandoah or like here's over jordan um with a beautiful image of a little boy on the lane you know there are endless endless opportunities to but again to bring in photography fine art illustration that are, you know, somewhat more whimsical. Um, nobody knows the trouble I've seen for this beautiful girl. So, and again, you can see there are different types of art um, that are, you know, that contained within the book, mm -hmm. but thematically the standards are all there and you, these can even be sung, yep. um, you know, with a, with a small group um, and again, photography. Uh, what a smile on that one. <laughs> I know it's beautiful. I know it's the kind of thing where you really could just sit. I had experiences with my mother-in-law um, with the first book where we would kind of, we wouldn't get even that deep into it because it would be like three or four poems deep and pictures deep. And we'd talk, end up talking about one of her neighbors and um, you know, a girlfriend that you know she went to high school with in South Boston, Pinky, and how you know all the boys loved Pinky. And then we would be on a tangent about Pinky for 45 minutes, but guess what? she was absolutely lit up and she was engaged and it was fun. And I learned all kinds of new things about her and um, all, th you know, things about her neighborhood and her experiences. So that brings me tremendous joy to know that it, it served its purpose. It did its job and we can revisit other pages and other books on other visits, but really to just get the juices flowing and to get the conversation rolling is the, you know, that's the, the, the goal. And I was at a meeting um, at the Alzheimer's Association. Um, actually, it was a training, and one of the facilitators said, "You know, we can't change the disease. We can't change the course of the disease right now, but we can give someone a positive experience." And that just stuck with me. I thought, at the very least, if we can focus on care and focus on person-centered care, retaining identity, and retaining self-worth and dignity, not a repurposed children's book, not a, a book that is, you know, uh, too challenging, thus, you know, frustrating and, and, and agitating. That's moving us in the wrong direction. So if we can do something that can give someone a positive experience and they feel successful, that's, that's job one. Yep. Moments of joy. Moments yep. of joy. Yeah. That's, you know, it, these will be, there's so many dementia friendly libraries that are out there too, that they will love to be, to see your product and, and know about them. They've just been creeping up the last few years and it's just been amazing to see our, our group in Roseville, Roseville Shoreview and um, Maplewood launched one. And then uh, Carol Jackson, the li librarian there, um, put an article in there their librarian journal and then more have popped up and a lot of them have gotten grants um, to expand. So I know there was one, one up north here. They got like a $90,000 grant to do, I, I believe it was 10, um, 10 different libraries and set up resources. So, and, and then they put together packets that people can sign out. So they don't have to dig through. They can just say, give me a dementia friendly packet and right. you know they're off and, and stuff. So that will be um, amazing. And 
You know, it does give people great comfort to be able to have something to give people who are uncomfortable with this that is just a natural thing to do. We've all read a story to, you know, our kids or somebody else or read to ourselves. And again, right. if you don't want to read, you can just talk about the picture and, you know, what does that bring about? It's, you know, you can go so many different ways with this that right. um, it, it makes it really not not a stressful process, just a natural one, which is sweet. And I love the size, you know, so they're not too small. So if someone still is able to hold on to the book, they right. can physically hold on to it as well. And if not, then, you know, you can hold on to it and and um, and show them, you know, what all is there and, and talk. But yeah, just a really, really cool, cool stuff. Then I, then I thought, oh, big bands, that would be another one or just music. Oh, yeah. Well, there, again, if you go on Amazon, there are books that, as you said, focus on big bands or, you know, uh, muscle cars or, mm -hmm. or things, you know, things of, yep. you know, um, the bygone era. And I encourage people to check those out. Of course, you and I, we have different needs and different um, predispositions and different, different tastes and different, like, like I said before, with my mother-in-law with the Mary Higgins Clark, it wouldn't be what I would go in, you know, to, to check out from the library. But that's okay because the assortment and the variety is what's so key. And doesn't this population deserve that too? Yep. The the um, interest based, you know, the high interest texts that are manageable and that are really tailored to their, you know, their needs, their, you know, what they need now. Um, so that's that I think is is great, and I encourage anybody who who wants to do something similar um i think it's great because it, this is growing exponentially in the meantime you know people search for a cure i think that the most important thing we can do is in the here and now and in the lifetime of our loved ones is to provide them with the best the best of everything the best of care um the best of support and um to really honor their intellect which, you know, which remains. And, uh, you know, you have real, you have real preferences. We all do. So if you prefer to sleep in, or if you prefer to, um, you know, eat breakfast, you know, first thing, or you prefer to take a nature walk, or you like to shower in the evening, those are all things that we need to respect and honor. And these books are, I think are, it's, it's a part of that whole, um, you know, mindset. It, it's saying, okay, you were a homemaker and you loved it and you want to talk about it and think about it. But right now it's hard for you to access that part of yourself. So we're going to help you do that with materials that appeal to you. It's pretty simple. Well, and you know, during COVID too, this is a beautiful gift to send to somebody who's feeling trapped in, you know, if they're in a in a community setting or if they're in their own, you know, apartment um, and still living independently, this is, you know, because again, you can reminisce by yourself too. It, it, you know, it doesn't have to be necessarily exactly. yeah. someone guiding you through. Uh, same when, you know, people will pull out, you know, a family album and just, uh, you know, keep going through it and, you know, keep calling on those memories. These books do the, do the same thing. So if people want to get a hold of you, they can go to nanasbookseries.com. That's nanasbookseries.com. And they can email you at nanasbookseries at gmail.com. You know, keeping it simple. And then you also have uh, an Instagram account as well. It's yes. Nanas underscore and then books. Yes. With that. And do you want to give out a phone number? Somebody sure. Else? So your phone number is... Um, 860-227-4218. That's 860-227-4218. And again, you know, reach out to Lorette Clear. And a Clear is not spelled like you think it is. Um, right, it's, right. It's K-L-I-E-R. Um, but again, incredible, incredible job. I just major kudos for what you've accomplished. In Thank you, Lori. Uh, coming a, from you, I, I really, that means that much more and I really appreciate it. Oh, it's, this is so needed and it's been fun to see more and more books come online. Um, but, you know, and a lot of them are, you know, telling stories of, of experience and stuff. But I, I love 
the engagement piece here. Um, and, and not to put any of those others down, because I've got a couple of those books in me that just haven't popped out yet. <laughs> but Call you know, me, we'll work on it. Shared experiences are so important. And yeah. what you've done through this collection is really done a, a shared experience on such a huge level you know, of, of pieces that are ingrained and yet they're generalized enough and yet individualized because we each take things in differently and, you know, have our own personal history with things. So um, the chatter can continue and um, those moments of joy. So thank you again so much. And I thank you for having me. wish you continued um, success. For our listeners, I hope that you love these books as much as I do. I just think they are a fabulous, fabulous tool. And I hope that you will like, click, and share and spread the word of Nana's books. Until next time, have a great week. Bye now.